Well, I guess let's just start with today then. So, you know, we got that AP, AP alert that you've now decided to go to the Court of Appeals. Tell us what has happened, what's been filed in, in court, and what you're hoping to come from this. Uh, there was a couple of things. Um, I'm not at liberty to talk about it a, a lot, you know, just for, for you know, just for our, our case purposes. But, you know, we asked for a couple of things. The judge did deny our stay, but we still have another request before the Court of Appeals. Um, you know, uh, I will say this whole situation has been very frustrating. And I will say this, that I'm very unhappy with the way things went in Kent County. Now, people will say, of course, you didn't win. Well, here's why. Uh, the plaintiffs got two days of testimony. We got one. One. Uh, the judge wouldn't allow one of our plans, our our, our uh, witnesses to testify, cut us short, allow the plaintiff to have a rebuttal witness in order to admit something into evidence that the plaint the, the rebuttal witness claims she got off of Telegram. You know, and this is the kind of case we had. He totally ignored the quorum piece. And our bylaws, the Michigan Republican Party bylaws are extremely clear that quorum cannot be obtained by proxy when the vote requires a larger number of members. It's very clear, spelled out English. And the two things that require a larger members to conduct the business of is removals and bylaw changes. So they didn't have quorum. He just totally ignored, glossed over it. That, that was completely, completely egregious. And to not allow one of our key witnesses to testify was, was awful. And that's why it was a complete injustice. Now, I'll let people draw their own conclusion. But for the for the plaintiffs to get two days, us to get one, not to get all of our witnesses. As a matter of fact, one of the plaintiffs who was also a witness testified, she perjured herself. And we have video evidence of her of her perjuring herself. And the judge would not allow it to be played. But then when the plaintiffs want to play video footage to try to accuse one of our witnesses of false testimony, he let it be played. It was a total double standard throughout that entire trial. You could even see how they were interacting with each other, that it was a double standard throughout the the the, the blotter box from Warner Norcross and Judd and how Judge Rossi were interacting with each other. You could even see that there was camaraderie between them and their body language. It was absolutely unbelievable. But forget all of that. But the fact that he completely ignored quorum which is spelled out plainly in our bylaws, that you cannot achieve quorum with proxy when, a, when there's a larger number of members required. And the only two things that require larger members is removal and bylaws changes. And everything that went in the plaintiff's favor, he just, he, he made sure that, he, oh, well, you know, uh, he was tight and he was like, well, you know, nothing in the bylaw says that signatures need to be verified before before taking a vote for removal. What are you talking about? When a candidate send in signatures to the board of canvassers, it's obvious they have to verify the signature. So it, it's just completely ridiculous for us as a party to say, listen, before when you send some signatures to remove a member, they first need to be verified. People like people don't commit fraud. He goes, oh, well, the bylaws don't say the signatures need to be verified. What are you talking about? Then he goes on to say, well, the bio, and we was like, well, for one, once the signatures are sent, submitted, we need to verify them, then call a meeting. Well, nothing in the bylaw said you have to sit, verify the signatures first and call a meeting. What are you talking about, Judge Rossi? Then on top of it all, our, our witness from our, our policy committee and, and was, was pointing out that when the bylaws have any ambiguity, who determines the, how to, clean, to clarify? The committee. So our policy committee, created a report, put it before the committee, and the, uh, the majority of the state committee voted to accept the report. And this is why this whole situation is so infuriating, because it's not about me. It's not about me. The majority of the state central committee wants me to be the chair. And they, the other side, taking a minority with lawfare, went into a favorable judge who happens to be one of their friends, and then tried the case, and it was just not justice at all. And it's the reason why Pete Hoekstra will not call a state meeting in person. He won't. I dare him to call a state central committee, committee meeting in person. He will not do it because he will have to face the committee and he will face an angry committee because it's about representation. You know, people within the party structure have a right to representation. Over 1,000 people voted for me as chair. Over 1,000 people. And now thanks to Judge Rossi, he's going to claim that 40 people had a right to bend the rules and he called it sharp elbow tactics. Like, no, they violated the bylaws. If there's any ambiguity, that's why the committee settled the dispute and not some 
law firm will go before a favorable judge. That's why the committee settled the dispute. The committee spoke to the amb any perceived ambiguity and the committee voted to accept the report. And he's just going to override the committee, override the delegates and just, you know, a couple of good old boys can get together and, and make a decision. This is this is not what our republic is about. So again, it's not about me personally. Trust me, all this headache and drama, I could totally be doing something else. But it's about our country and it's about what's right. And it's about the committee having representation. So this this whole thing, and that's why we filed an appeal. It's just completely wrong. It's completely wrong. So let's, sorry, for my own purposes, I'm gonna just going to ask you a couple questions to break it down for me. So first, let's just talk first on who who is against you as chair? Who is coming up against you? Because I'm seeing, you know, all these court filings, trying to make sense of all of them. It says, you know, plaintiffs are among the 107 members of the Michigan Republican State committee who voted to replace Christina Caramo. Do you believe it's the 107 members of the state committee that want you replaced? No, because the majority of the members want me to remain as chair. So what it is, it's not a majority. That's also what's so dishonest because our members are 107. 40 people voted to remove me. 40 people. I mean, unless I'm missing mass here, or whatever I've been lied to my whole life, but last time I checked, 40 of 107 is not a majority. It's, it's not. And then one of the things we pointed out to Judge Rossi in the case is that our attorneys pointed out that one of the people who signed the petition is a registered voter in another state. And he just goes, oh, well, you know, I'm like, what are you, like, we're like, what are you talking about? It, it is completely insane. <laughs> it, 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 and so when it says, who's coming against me? It, 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 this is the problem in the Republican Party. It, we, when I say we, right, the people who elected me in the state committee, we wanted the party to go in a different direction. This party has been nothing more than a good old boys club that fails America. If you talk to the average Republican voter, do you think they have fav favorable things to say about the Republican Party leadership? They don't. Why is it that the average Republican voter is angry with the party leadership? Why is it that the average Republican voter is angry with their Republican elected officials? What? What? <laughs> what? why are they upset? Why are they upset? That should tell you something. It's because the, the party apparatus have been, have been structured to benefit a handful of people. And so those of us who are populist, I mean, think about it, Mike Pence put together, what, a $20 million pack to fight populism within the Republican Party? I'm a populist. So that that is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. That old guard wing of the party hates populists. And it's not people who've been around for a long time. You know, there are people who've been in a party since, you know, Barry Goldwater days who are supporters of mine. It's because what they want is a party that truly puts America first. That's what we're about. And the people who are all about the corporate elites and their good old boys network, they can't stand us. They, they just can't. And so they organized and took their billions of dollars to try to purge us from the party. And they have the judges, they have friends in the media, they have they have the, the corporate apparatus. I mean, think about this. William Bill Parfait, I'm sure you know who that is. He was part of a group, Republicans for Whitmer. Then you have Rick Snyder, who obviously you know who that is. He endorsed Joe Biden. So the HRCC, who I'm sure you know who they are, they wanted, um, they have those, those two guys working to raise money to take back the Michigan House. Now think about this. What type of Republicans are they going to be recruiting when the one guy was part of Governor Whitmer's re-election team? Does this make any sense? So myself, naturally, when someone brought this to my attention, I called it out for what it is. It's appalling. And what do you think the average Repo Republican voter feels? How would the average Republican voter feel if they knew that the Republicans in the Michigan House were working with a guy who endorsed and was part of re-electing Gretchen Whitmer to take back the Michigan House? Do you think they would be happy about this? No, they're angry. I'm angry. And those two guys went around, and there's an article about it. Uh, Rep. Steve Carr talked about it. It's an article where they were actively telling people, don't give money to the Michigan Republican Party. Give it to us. Then these same people turn around and go, oh, she's not raising any money. But they use their influence to go and try to trash my reputation and say, don't give the party money, and then say, oh, look, she's not raising any money. So they go set the fire and then blame me for the fire. 
I mean, this this is this is this this the political oligarchy. They hate us. They hate us. It's not because I'm black. It's not because I'm a woman. It's because I'm not one of their puppets. That's what it's about. They want a bought and paid for puppet, and I won't comply. And so they have to do use their billions of dollars to personally destroy me. Well, let's <laughs> talk about the the party a little bit more and where the direction you wanted it to head. And I think the direction of the story you're working on with Andy is more about. Where does the Republican Party stand right now, especially amid this division and these court he hearings and rulings going on with you? Um, are we still having two separate conventions come Saturday? Well, I legally can't, uh, due to the court order, I can't legally act as chair. I can't legally uh, call myself chair. I had to change my social media down and take off the title chairwoman. Um, so I, I can't legally conduct a con convention. I can't give anybody advice on what to do. I have to essentially stay out of it. I do. Now, I'm still a Republican precinct delegate, but what I've been telling people to do is focus on their counties. Get your county government strong, because my belief is that everything starts local. And what I don't want to see is people distracted by the state drama, because this is not going to go away. It's not like, OK, let's say they rule against me and then Karamo just goes off into the sunset. No, let's not forget we have a 107 person committee where the majority is angry. The majority of the committee are pissed. And so that it's not like I go away. He's still got to deal with the, the committee. So the committee isn't going to just sit there. I mean, there's people already circulating, gathering signatures after the hearing to throw Pete out. So that, that process has already started. And I haven't coordinated it. I haven't told, no, I just have found out that there are already people circulating petitions to throw Pete out. So, I mean, th th these people didn't care when they did this, that th it was it's a chaos strategy. What you do is if you can't control something, you just destroy it. So they couldn't control the party. They knew they didn't have the numbers on the committee. They know they don't have the delegate numbers. So the strategy was chaos. That way they could turn and go look at these people they're incompetent. And so what we're encouraging people to do is not fall for it. Focus on your county government. Get your county strong. Once the deadline for all the candidates for Michigan House, vet all these people, vet all the folks for Senate, show up to their events, ask tough questions, respectfully, of course, respectfully ask very tough questions, and then go back and make sure you're an ambassador to all your neighbors and let them know what these people are up to, what they're doing, Go to, to the hearings at the Michigan House, Michigan Senate. Make sure you show up to your county and city meetings, ask some questions, make sure you're speaking up during public comment. That's what we're focusing on people doing instead of getting caught up in Twitter and Telegram and the fight between Pete and I. I'll be fine. And the thing about it is, 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 is this is the fight does not stop. I'm not done. Even if they rule, no matter what happens, the committee knows the truth. The delegates know the truth. The facts are out there. Our bylaws are clear. I mean, it's so clear how many bylaws are violated and Judge Rossi clearly didn't care. So we just continue on. We continue on because the fight is about saving the country. I'm a Republican because of the party platform. That's why I'm a Republican. And when I was very upset that even if Pete wins, why move the convention to Grand Rapids? This is how selfish of a person he is. Think about how self, just the chaos strategy. So he waits 10 days before the convention to say, we're going to go to Grand Rapids. We've already paid for the convention in Detroit. We've already paid for it. So what is the point of going to Grand Rapids? It's already paid for. All the costs of convention say Detroit. The delegates have reserved their hotel rooms in Detroit. We already had a hotel block set up. And the people have already reserved all their hotel rooms. <laughs> how unfair. How unfair. So now all the delegates are scrambling. Now we're getting reports that, and this is some, please include this in your story, that the, the counties that didn't send their their convention results, they not one back in December, we told all the counties, send your convention results to the party secretary because she's the legal record keeper for the party. So send all your results to the secretary. So Pete Hoekstra got this guy, Stu Foster, who's been with the party for decades, he's going to tell people, send send stuff to him. They, they He's not an elected member of the party. They don't even have control of the party apparatus. They were using the party's logo and raising money into a pack. That is illegal. That is completely, I mean, these people are literally committing federal crimes. 
campaign finance violations. You are to, the Michigan Republican Party is a federally recognized organization. And they are using our logo and raising money into a pack. I can text you the evidence. It is insane. So and I so- wanna- I want to go off of that really quick, too. So what do you think, what does that do for the Republican Party right now? You know, when you have the drama you're going through and then the the accusation of committing federal crimes, and we are months away from a general election. We are a less than a week away from Super Tuesday. I mean, is this hurting the November results? Of course. They don't care. That's why I'm angry. Uh, this is not about me. I, I, I can't emphasize it enough. It, it's not about me. Yes. And that's the plan. These people are so evil that they will gladly sack the party, cause us to lose so they can get back control of the party. So you look you look at the case we filed, right? And I'm going to say something very controversial, but the party was used for money laundering. That's what this party was used for. It was used to launder money. They need their operation back. They need their operation back. And we got in the way of that. So that you look at the lawsuit we filed in Lansing regarding the building. You have this entity, Seymour Street LLC, doing business as the Michigan Republican Party. How is that legal? You can't do business in, a, in the name of another legal entity. This doesn't make any sense. Then the, the building was collateral on a loan in the name of the Michigan Republican Party. So, and then we're being told, well, you guys don't own the building. Well, so how do we not own the building, but own the debt? And the building is collateral for the debt. Which is it? And then once we filed, when we were seeking declaratory relief, then that's when the knives came out. Even more. There are knives were already out. But that's when the knives came out. And there were efforts to try to terrify committee members. They were going to be personally on the hook. So these people have never been serious about winning elections. Never. They've never been serious about winning elections. They've never been serious about Republican governance. They have not been. We are. We're very serious about Republican governance. And so when we got serious about Republican governance, now they want us out. They want the good old boys club back in. They don't want people like me. Like I said, I had nothing to do with me being black or being a woman. Ain't got nothing to do with it. If I was corrupt, they would love me. That's what it's about. So, you know, we're very focused on moving forward. And so, the, the 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 fight to save and so our entire pr- pr- system and our, our and I hope I got time I don't know what time is it I don't know. <laughs> yeah but um our entire system was de- is designed the way we're setting up the party is everything is local that way if the state party goes wash then the mission continues the mission continues and that's what we're going to continue to do so whether I'm chair or not We're still going to work and get more citizens involved in local government, get more citizens down in Lansing, sitting in those committee hearings, asking questions, holding our elected officials accountable. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, independent. You need to be going to those local meetings. You need to be going to those those hearings. You need to be sitting in the in the wings when it's time for them to vote on a bill. You need to be there. If 10 to 15 more Michiganders just start showing up we will see a magnificent difference in government. But because we're not, this is why these people have begun to just run away with our freedoms. Well, two more questions for you, because I know you, it's 227. Do you have time for two more? I'll make them fast. Uh, I got time for, no, not really. One more. Make it quick. I got like 30 okay. seconds. One more. So I want to make sure I ask this right. Are you supporting Peter Hoekstra and will you be at the Grand Rapids Convention? Pete Hoekstra is a court appointed chair. He is illegitimate. I, I, I don't have to call him chair. I just can't call myself chair. <laughs> That's it. I just can't call myself chair. That's it. And then really, really quick, this says a decision needed by tomorrow. Is this on your appeals <laughs> file? Um, You know, I, I can't comment on the court case because there's a lot of fast moving parts. I really don't have any comment on our ongoing court case, but we have appealed uh, the decision in King County. Perfect. Well, anything else you want to add? God bless you. Thank you so much. It was great to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you too. Anytime. Thank you. Have a good one. And I'll, and I'll send you the evidence I'm talking about where they use the Michigan Republican Party logo, but the money is going to a pack. Yeah, please do. We would love that. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye.